Hey everyone, so I picked up this bike a few months ago with the plans to swap all the parts from my other fixed gear bike onto this one. Basically just because I like the paint job and the decals and everything of this a bit better. So the parts are coming from my giant Yukon fixed gear mountain bike, which is basically just black with a little bit of purple splattered at the front. So it's quite a different paint job on this Peugeot compared to it. So it's quite a nice purple and it has sort of like this pink splatter over the top and quite nice colorful decals on it as well. So there are a couple of strange things about these old Peugeots. One, I don't really know what that hole is for in the fork dropout. Um, the decals aren't anything special. That scribble on along the top tube is pretty cool though. I like the colors of it. So one other strange thing about these old Peugeots, or at least some of them, uh, they have a really weird seat post diameter. So this is a 24 millimeter diameter. It actually measures about 23.9. Um, so it's quite strange. This bike does have horizontal dropouts. It just has like these little plastic or rubberish sort of bungs in them to take out the spacing. Um, this basically just sort of sets the axle at like a right distance for the indexing of the derailleur. So it came with some nice RX-7 black rims. The rest of the parts are just pretty low spec, so they won't be um, too useful to me. But this is it compared to the giant Yukon. So quite a similar size. Um, obviously the giant Yukon is missing its tires at the moment. I was just testing them on another bike. So yeah, completely different paint jobs, just looks so much nicer on the Peugeot. Uh, that's the purple that you can see there on the front of the Giant. It's a Nitto 4 shred bars and then a Nitto Technomic stem. Just a couple of nice little parts on it, but nothing too special really. Um, Black Spire chainring on old Dior Alex cranks. And then I just have one strap and toe clip on the Giant. Um, but I will be using two on the next build. So it's basically just a disc brake rear hub with a bolt-on cog. It's pretty common nowadays. Um, it wasn't around for a while, but... So going back and forth between the Peugeot and the Giant, so you can just sort of see the geometry and sizing difference. The Peugeot is a little bit smaller, so I don't know if it's going to work out in the long run. The Giant has a little bit longer top tube. I think it's about a 58 and a half. 59 centimeter and the Peugeot is about 57. It also has different geometry so I don't know how that's going to play out um, but we figure that out later on. So just tearing down the Peugeot now just taking everything off um, not really much is going to go back onto the bike just some of the parts from the Giant. So I will be using a front brake on this fixed gear build that's just how the how I like it. I will be changing the gearing down to a very spinny 65 gear inches. That's really low, but it suits some of the hills that I'll be go having to go up on my regular rides. Um, so I'm going to use a 44 tooth on the front and then 18 out back. So just smashing out those um, rubber bungs now. Yeah, for some reason they were kind of stuck there. And then sometimes people decide to cut off the derailleur hanger when doing fixed gear builds. Um, it's your bike, do whatever you want. I don't do it though. Um, just in case like, I want to throw gears on in the future. It does look a lot cleaner though without the derailleur hanger and like all the cable stops and stuff. But yeah, it's completely up to you if you want to leave them on or not. Then just tearing down the rest of the bike. It came apart pretty easily actually. Um, everything came off after I sort of soaked some things in WD-40. I didn't need to use any penetrating oil or any heat to get anything off, so pretty smooth really. I did throw some WD-40 down the seat tube just to make sure that the bottom bracket would come out easy. I just put it through there before I get to it and then so it soaks through a little bit just to sort of help it out a little bit. Um, then if that doesn't get it out then I use some penetrating oil or something and then soak it for a day or two. Um, otherwise if that doesn't get the bottom bracket out then I normally get like a just a longer pole on it like bolt the tool down so the stem needed a little bit of a whack sometimes the wedges just get stuck in the stereo tube so just a little tap down from a punch so yeah you can see there on the quill stem it was quite corroded um not too bad though there was no ledge or anything inside the stereo tube so 
No real biggie. So moving on to the cranks now. Sometimes with these old bikes, if it's been sitting around for 20, 30 years and it hasn't had any servicing done, or just if nobody's taken the cranks off, um, sometimes you can have some issues with these. Um, I have ended up having to cut off my share, fair share of cranks. I probably have to cut off like four or five or something like that. Um, just because the bolts and everything have been seized on. There is a bit of galvanic corrosion that happens between the alloy crank arms and then the steel spindle luckily these came off pretty easily though so i didn't have to do any crazy cutting jobs um actually even the bottom bracket came out nicely because it is a steel bottom bracket and a steel frame so these don't very very often get stuck in frames it's normally like an alloy cup into a steel frame that gets stuck or even alloy into alloy can be a bit of a pain so this was actually lo loose. I guess just the vibrations of everything. It just sort of didn't seat up properly or the previous owner didn't maintain it properly. You can see here it was almost finger tight. Um, I couldn't quite do it with my fingers, but as soon as I put the tool on, it just had enough leverage to slip around. So the unsealed bottom bracket had sort of fallen apart inside itself, but it was still spinning okay. So not too bad there. Um, this won't be reused anyway i'll just put a sealed bearing unit inside it cleaning out the bottom bracket shower just to make sure that there's no huge um, rust and scale build up if you've had an old steel frame before then you'll know <laughs> if it's really bad then you'll get um sort of chunks of steel and stuff it sort of makes its way down into the bottom bracket because it's one of the lower points in the frame so if you pull the bottom bracket out and there's huge chunks of frost and you can hear little bits jangling around. Then your frame's probably on its last legs. So I do a bit of a test mock-up at this point. So there's a Nitto B802 bars. And you can see there, I have to have the seat post just a little bit higher than what's recommended. I feel okay about it though. It does sort of have like this double thickness at the clamp anyway. So I don't know how far that runs down. Um, I guess it's like the inner seat tube and then they put something over the top as like a clamp. For most normal seat post diameter bikes, I could just get a longer seat post. Um, but because this is quite a strange diameter, um, it's kind of tricky to get a 24 millimeter seat post. That's quite a bit longer. Um, so I don't know, I could get a 22.2 seat post and sort of use some shims or something to build it up. Anyway, moving on to cleaning up some of the parts now. Just some of the steel bits and bobs have a bit of surface rust on them. So I'll just pull everything apart and soak it in vapor rust to remove the surface rust. This does a really good job at removing rust off steel things, but obviously it doesn't do anything to like the uh, like surface damage. So if there's any pitting or anything, then the surface will still be pitted, but it just won't be rusted. To the inside of the frame, I use some Penetrol, uh, but it's basically just a rust prevention. You can also use Frame Saver or um, Bow Shield, something like that. But Penetrol is what I have locally, and I've just used it for years, and it's just been great for me. It spreads really nicely on the inside of the frame. It's like an oily texture, um, so it's, it's quite thin and it spreads nicely. And then after that, I clean up the exterior of the frame. This is just because um, it's... A, it's very dirty and <laughs> it needs a dang good clean. But also the rust treatment that I put inside the frame, it leaks out and stuff. So I do the rust treatment first and then come back to clean it all up. Um, so that rust stuff, it dries to a clear film, as you might have seen on the can. Um, but you have quite a bit of dry time, so you don't really have to rush to wipe it up. I don't know how the how like mud just gets through everything. But cleaning out the brake posts and everything, I do come back and give these a, a quick sand when I'm putting the bike together, because they do get like that little layer of surface rust. So 
one of the other strange things about these old Peugeots is you can see the crimping and the um, chainstays there. They do also have like this strange crimping on the top of the chainstay. It's sort of like triangulated the tube, sort of. After this, cleaning up like the decals and just giving the frame a once over with the polish. I just use quite a mild cream cut and polish. Um, other people use a tea cut or something like that. Um, it removes like little scuffs and stuff off the paint. It's, and it's pretty safe to use on decals. I've never really had any issues with it. As you can see here, it just sort of restores the shine. Makes it look all nice and it feels really nice as well. Just going over the whole frame after that. But I don't want to bore you with the whole polishing job. So the next day, all the vaporized parts get pulled out. I quite like using a vaporized because you can just shove your hand into it. Um, you can also use vinegar or something like that. It works pretty good too. Then just wipe things down. After the vaporized, I either like clear coat it or something like that just to protect it a bit. Um, it sort of depends on the, the item. So like brake bolts, stuff like that. Sometimes I want them black, so I go with black spray paint. Um, other things, if they're polished or, you know, sort of chrome finished, then I'll just go over with some clear coat. So just moving over now to cleaning up the headset and then I'll be doing some assembly of the bike. So this headset was in okay condition. Um, I basically just check for any pitting or um, indexing marks. So sometimes these cage bearings, they um, create sort of... <laughs> They call them like indexing marks because it creates like notches that end up like indexing the headset. So it's sort of like self-centers, which, which is really annoying. Um, so there's no index marks or um, like pitting or anything in any of the surfaces, then it's pretty much good enough for me. Um, as long as it doesn't feel too rumbly or anything like that. I'll reuse the headset. It just saves a bit of money and stuff. And like it, if it's perfectly good to use, then... Just why replace it? So going over some of the outside of the bike. Um, I don't know why this clip is here. This is before polishing the bike. Um, but yeah, rust converter works great. It just turns all the rust black. Um, you don't even have to coat over it. It just works as like a primer. Um, but it seals it nicely. I've used this on bikes for a couple of years now. Probably four or five years and I haven't seen any um, rust reforming after using rust converter um, that's a CRC branded product but there are others reassembling the stem I just put grease on like the contact parts and stuff and then obviously on the quill wedge and everything before it goes into the frame Yeah, looks quite nice. I really like these old Nato parts. Got to be one of my favourite. I don't really like this headset. Um, like it has that rubber um, seal over the top, but without that seal, you can see all the bearings are all exposed. So I go over with more grease just to sort of weather tight it a bit better. Don't feel 100% about it, but um, I'm sure it'll do its job nicely. It just... It's just in the back of my head that it's like why didn't they just have a cover that like sits nicely or, or at least like build the seal into it properly so you don't have to like shove it back over i don't know um then throwing the stem in i use a toothbrush to sort of work the grease up and down because otherwise you can't really reach that far um or you have to have like a different fitting on your grease gun which is just annoying So I use a screwdriver or something to sort of separate the handlebar clamp a little bit. Just just make sure you, you don't scratch up the clamp area on your bars. Um, these Nitto bars have like a nice engraved area at the front. So I don't want to mess that, mess that up. This is an old Diacomp. I think it's a DC135 or I uh, can't remember. Um, brake lever. And then these are Colt. Sorry, cult, um, cult, um, BMX waffle, Vans waffle cruiser grips. 
they're quite a nice um, feel to them. They're super thick though, so if you've got smaller hands, I wouldn't really recommend them. I actually forgot to put the um, cable hanger on the bike, so that's what I'm doing now. I have uh, <laughs> some old spaces made up from an old Cannondale frame. So I just use some of those spaces in there in this cable hanger just to make up the difference because it's initially intended for a 25.4 quill stem off an old Marin, I think. So those are the tires that we'll be using on the bike. Pretty simple wheels. I just switched the rear onto the front because I've done some skids on it. These are the brakes. I can't remember what they are exactly, just some old Shimano cantilevers. A lot of the DX and XT and everything from that area sort of look the same anyway. Just hitting them quick with some auto sole. There are like some sort of oxidization marks and stuff, which you could get out by polishing them with sandpaper and stuff, but um, I'm not going to do that. It's not the kind of look for the bike that I want to go for, and I really don't want to spend that much effort just rebuilding this bike or doing the frame swap. So some of the parts you can see there, they got like a little bit of silver paint. I'm uh, just trying something a little bit different with these ones. Cleaning up the brake posts, I use two different scotch brake pads and then go over them quickly, just wiping off all the excess. From here, I use a little bit of grease before putting the brakes back on, making sure they feel all nice. Um, in hindsight, I don't really like the black bolts over the silver caliper. I might change that up next time. Um, I just thought I'd try it. Tried it, not a fan. So when setting up cantilever brakes, I just quickly mock things up and then like throw the cable on and then go from there. I try and use cool stop brake pads or at least try use them on the brake on the back if I have two brakes. Um, just so then I have a really grippy brake in the back. Then the front is normally pretty good anyway. Cool stop brake pads are amazing. So if you haven't tried them, just check them out. The salmon or the dual com compound are really good for all weather and stuff. So from here, I just mock up the um, straddle cable length. So you want this to be 90 degrees when the brake pads contact the rim. So just setting up the height from here to get the right angle when the pads contact. So there's a little bit of back and forth that you have to do here. But um, that's why I set the pads at sort of the right distance beforehand. And then you can la lock the straddle cable hanger in place and then do any pad adjustments from there. So just making sure that it's like centered and stuff. It doesn't have to be spot on because it'll find its center anyway. So I think these screws come in handy, but sometimes they do more harm than good. From here I just sort of make sure that the pads are even and then add in a little bit of toe in. So adding toe in I just use the allen key, put it in there and then sort of lever it forward a little bit. Sometimes um, some brakes need a little bit more toe in than others so just give this a little bit of a trial once the bike's all rolling then throw on the cable ends and go from there. It always pays to make sure that you can actually get the straddle cable off. Um, sometimes I like to use my little multi-tools pliers. Um, just depends sort of how tight you have it. Moving on to putting the cranks and chain ring back together. So I'm actually using some different cranks because I'm using a different chain ring. So the cranks off the giant won't be used on this build. Um, I like to use a bit of Loctite on the chainring bolts just because I don't want the chainring blade falling off or the bolts coming loose. It's just blue Loctite so it can be undone pretty easily anyway. Uh, it just gives me like that little bit of security that I'm not going to lose a chainring or have a bolt come loose. Because you don't carry a chainring tool to tighten them back up like nicely. So if one comes loose on a ride then 
you're not really screwed, but um, you'd kind of be worried about it, I think. So yeah, 44 tooth chainring. This is a Pake or a Soma Fab chainring. It's just quite a cheap stamped chainring. Throwing some grease in the bottom bracket threads here. I force in the grease so you don't like overload it because otherwise um, you can sort of bind up the bottom bracket and you can actually mess it up by overloading the grease too much. And then once it's almost all the way in, I put in a little bit of grease just so it sort of squidges in there and creates a bit of a water barrier from water ingress. And then just wiping off the excess after that. So in the right hand side of the screen there, you can see the black uh, rust converter. That's basically what it looks like afterwards. Um, sort of a, almost a purple in parts, like a dark brownish blacky purple. Yeah, I don't know. Um, throwing the cranks back on now. So these are actually a painted um, old X-Age crank. So they're 130 BCD. Um, off an old Raleigh, I think. Yeah, nothing too special, but they do the job nicely. And they're quite a good um, offset and everything for single speed builds. So pedals, I don't have anything in mind. So I just picked these up. I think these were off the giant or they were off something else that had some toe straps on it and just throwing off on some old Christoph straps um sorry toe clips and straps I don't know how how long these are going to hold up because they look bloody awful but um they should hold my toe in for a little bit anyway while I wait for the new ones So yeah, just throwing these on. I think I did service these a little while ago anyway, these pedals. So just throwing in the rear wheel now. I didn't have to cold set the frame. Um, in some situations you might have to, um, but this is a 135 millimeter hub. So it fits pretty straight into the, the frame. Um, I normally do cold setting just by like a, a nice long threaded rod or just like a long bolt with a couple of nuts and then like spread it apart, let it sit for a couple of days and keep spreading it. Um, it works really well with steel frames. There's really no issues with it. Just keep an eye on everything to make sure you're not cracking anything. I had this old um, Izumi master link from an old Izumi chain, I guess. <laughs> so I thought ah, I would use that. It's gold, it would be easy to see. And it's tough, even though the rest of the chain is just KMC. So I, I buy KMC chain in like 6 meter length. Um, they sell it as 14 garage door chain. So it's like 20 bucks for 6 meters. Which is pretty insane. So the bike's all together now. The only real issue I have is my handlebar bag booping into the front brake cable. I could use a lower cable hanger that comes off the fork. Um, I tried everything to sort of set the handlebar bag, I flipped it backwards and stuff. But I couldn't get it to, to sit nicely, so I don't want to change the cable hanger. So instead I'm just going to create like a little bit of a barrier somehow. Just like a bit of a rod or something coming down from the stem or something. So what I came up with was an old bottle cage, like section, sort of bent up, coming up the front there. It looks pretty sleek and it does the job really nicely. It just protects the front brake cable. So from here we're just going to go for a bit of a ride just to check it out and see what I think about it. Uh, but yeah, hope you liked the video and I'll check back in a bit later. Thanks!
So it was right here that the strap broke. I actually thought that it was the strap, like the clip on the strap that sort of gave way because it was so rusty. I was expecting that to fail. Like I thought it was just gonna let go of the strap at some point, but it didn't. It actually broke the strap. Um, so after that, I just thought I'd try like a couple of little track stands, but I just wasn't feeling it. So I pretty much just stopped filming after this. Um, I thought I'd come back another day and just try some more skids and stuff, but just never got around to it. And here we are, like, finishing up the video. Really beautiful sunset. Um, there's some more clips from the rest of the ride that you'll see here. I don't know if you saw it, be saw it before, but it goes no hands pretty good. Um, and that's with the front weight on as well. There's not much in there, like clothes, regular sort of commuter stuff. Clothes, tool, pump. There's actually, actually some cake in there as well. Um, yeah. That's pretty good. Yep. There it comes. Ah. So 
So my thoughts on the bike. I really like how it looks. I like the setup and everything. I wouldn't want to change anything. But it's just too small for me. With a little bit longer seat post, I did actually order a seat post. Um, like I don't want to change the handlebars or steam or anything just to accommodate me for it. But the top tube is a little bit too short. So I could swap the parts onto this specialized hard rock. Uh, it's a little bit bigger, but it's not as tall. So it does have um, horizontal dropouts and everything, so it would work pretty nicely. But it's just not as tall as the Peugeot. So I do really like the height of the Peugeot, um, just with a longer seat post. But yeah, it's just, I don't know if it's the geometry or what, because it does look like the seat tube is a little bit more laid back. Um, but I have to have the seat forward so I don't get like any knee pain or anything. I didn't have any knee pain or anything on the bike rides that I've done. Um, so I think I did about 100Ks on it, trying to test it out and everything. Um, so I won't be keeping the Peugeot. Um, I'm going to hand it off to a mate. Um, I'm hoping he'll do it up as a fixed gear build. I have no idea. Probably he builds everything as like a single speed or fixed gear. So I hope you like it, Zane. Um, take good care of it. Beat it up. I don't really care. <laughs> Just have fun with it, dude. Um, but yeah, it's going to a great home. Um, I'm going to build up maybe the Giant in like a different colorway or something. I have no idea. Um, thanks for checking out the video, though. I've got another fixed gear build coming up. That's a 700C one. Uh, yeah, so there's that look to look forward to. Uh, thanks to all the new subscribers and everything. I can't thank you enough for just joining along in this weirdness. Um, that means so much, so much to me. Uh, thanks so much. Peace. Bye.